Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Hello and welcome to Hello Self. I am Patricia Leonard, your host. And if you have been on this podcast before, you know that my goal and my purpose and my mission in life and specifically on this podcast is to help offer tips and help you discover what might be standing in the way of you being all you can be and accomplishing all you be it's re- all you can be it's really about turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans if you have been following me last year uh in november i think it was 2023 i uh said that Normally, I interview individuals, but I said I was going to do a four-part series that would really help individuals specifically look at themselves through their own eyes, through uh, workshop-type events that I would offer in that four-series podcast. And again, it would be Hello Self, Waking Up to Who We Are and taking some of the ideas that we have received from those we've interviewed before and simply from my corporate background and my own life background. (laughs) Oh, yes, we learn a lot from ourselves, don't we, if we pay attention. So this uh, four series podcast is to help you pay attention. It doesn't mean that it's an answer, but it can help you find an answer. So our goal is to uncover more of how your thinking and mindsets can become your limiting factors in getting everything you want out of life. So episode one, we've already had that when it was just posted, but you can go see it on my website, patricialeonard.net or Spotify. You can uh, see it on Business Radio X. You can see it a lot of places. It's posted. If you have trouble, just let me know. I'll give you my email at the end. Now, what we're going into now is episode two, which is beginning to identify your own truths about your limiting beliefs, and uncovering what you might want to be doing or the legacy you want to leave. So in episode one, just to bring you up to speed, we basically introduced you to the mask you wear and why those masks might be getting in the way of your accomplishing everything you want. That was really intended as a possible view of your behaviors, your beliefs, and your perceptions that are masking you and causing you to have this mindset about, no, I couldn't do that, Um, I'm too old, whatever the mask we're covering up. So we're just going to take that to the next step now in episode two and start to look at what are some of those. And I'm going to be doing it in an unconventional way. So I hope that you'll ride along with me. Now, just before I get started on the assessment process that we're going to use to help us uncover uh, some of our own hidden truths under those masks we wear. <laughs> William Barclay, I, I really like, um, I, I like to go back and look at what people have said. There is so much wisdom that's already out there. And I like to take that and twist it in my own stories in my podcast. So I really like this one 
William Barclay said, there are two great days in a person's life. The day we are born and the day we discover why. That is why this episode is so significant because that is exactly what I want to focus on is your why. Once we have become honest with ourselves about the mask we wear, it can become easier to discover what limiting mindsets we have been embracing. So we, and you'll discover more of that today, and you may have already discovered a lot in your life, we get in our own way by the mindsets that we have allowed to control us. They actually become our patterns in life. Do you get up every morning and eat the same thing or do the same thing, run and take a shower? Do you have patterns in your life? Why don't you come home a different way tonight from work? Or maybe call somebody you haven't called for a while and say, you know what? I just had you on my mind today. Do something different because we get in a, oh, we get up and we do this. We take our shower. We go eat breakfast. We go to work. We come home the same way. We go to the grocery store, buy the same groceries, buy something different. (laughs) But our mindsets and life patterns may have caused us to limit our possibility exploring mind. And that's what I really like to do with my clients is take them outside that box that they live in. If you're a client of mine, you never know. I always go through an assessment process because I can assume that when you come to me and you say, this is what I'm looking for, Patricia. I can tell you nine times out of 10, we discover that is not it. Even if you come to say, I just want my resume updated. You can't just sit down and type a resume up and say, oh, well, now here you go. Here's what you've done. No, you've got to have in mind what you want to accomplish. Do you want a different kind of job? You want to start your own business? You've been thinking about partnering up with somebody else, but you yeah, you just didn't uh, push it beyond. No, that when they come to say they want a resume update, I can tell you we do more than a resume update. Yes, we do that. We accomplish what they want. But I had one young man that said to me, Patricia, thank you. He came for a resume update. He said, Patricia, thank you. I would never have asked for this salary level if you hadn't talked to me. So we have to get out of our own comfort zone, our own complacency, our own acceptance that this is it, or I couldn't do that because I haven't done that before. I bet you 10 bucks you've done it. People say, well, all I've done is worked at McDonald's. I said, oh, tell me what you did at McDonald's. We turned that into an executive job almost. (laughs) Just thinking about the responsibility that even if you're a cashier at the front, the responsibility when you smile at somebody, customers like that, they come back again. So you're growing the business. Okay, so I'm telling you enough of this. And I'll be referring to my notes because I've written down some things that, you know how you start talking and then you forget what you're going to say. (laughs) Well, I'll be jotting my memory by looking down at my notes. So right along with me, our mindsets and patterns have caused us to limit our possibility exploring minds. Remember I said that. And keep our dreams on that someday shelf. Remember, I want you to turn your cans into cans and dreams into plans by taking those dreams and goals off that someday shelf. That can be a reason why we simply become complacent and get in our flip-flop lives. We 
who we are and what we are is all that is possible. So we think that, oh yeah, this is all possible. This is who I am. I don't have that degree. I, I, uh, I don't know those people. Call them up and say, hi, I'm Patricia Leonard and I'm Susie or I'm John. <laughs> and they'll say, what do you want? Then you tell them. But you got to be ready before you call. <laughs> oh, that's where our work here can help. The what and the why will be our focus because that's what William Barclay said. The two more important days of our life is the day we were born and the way we discover our why. So I'm going to focus on two key things today, and that's what and why episode two and of course how we go about it discovering your what and your why what is important to you what is your what are your thoughts about this why often we don't challenge our own thinking we just go along and oh yeah that's okay that's the way it is so here's the way we're going to help i'm not saying these are answers but it just is a way to get us started talking to ourselves and maybe asking ourselves some questions. I will give you some questions to explore, just like we did in episode one. Remember, if you've seen that, I ask you some questions about the mask you wear. And we got more clear about that, I'm hoping. So the same thing is going on in this. I don't believe that coaches or any expert, quote, <laughs> has uh, the answer to your life and to your process and to your dreams. You have to state that. We often wait for somebody else to tell us how bad that is for we came here with a purpose and a passion in this lifetime to accomplish something and help others accomplish something too. But uh, I, so, so episode one, I asked some questions and I ask you to have a log book and I hope you still have that or at least a piece of paper that you can write these questions down on. So this is the activity for episode two. The what and the why of being a shoe. You're saying, what did you say? The what and why of being a shoe? Now I ask you, did anything in your mindset say to self, this activity is ridiculous. What in the world is she talking about? I thought she was a coach, a professional. Yeah, I have been for 40 years. <laughs> Oh, um, and I've been a mother, and I've been a friend, and I've been a family member. You see, all of those things are relevant here <laughs> for experience. But anyway, I know that you probably had some, did she say shoe? Yes, I did. So that's how we're going to start this episode two as a way to uncover some of your dreams and goals or things that you may be, your mindset that may be limiting you from reaching some of your dreams and goals. It doesn't mean that when we get through this, it'll, but it will make you think. And if I just said, well, what do you want to do professionally? You would come up with an answer. Sure you would. But you know what? We get in that same old mindset. Well, you know, this is what I, I should be saying. Well, if I want to make some income, no, I'm saying get out of what should and get out of what society says and discover your own dreams and goals and then figure out how to make that happen. And that's what we'll do next is talk about ways in the episode three, we'll be talking about ways to start manifesting the things that your shoe revealed to you. Are you ready? Get that mindset out. Get your piece of paper. I've given you enough time. Okay, here we go. 
we're starting with the activity. What type of shoe are you? I don't want an answer from you. Just write it down on your paper. To you. Why are you that type of shoe? Did you say you were a tennis shoe, a flip-flop, a spike heel, a boot? What what did a platform what did you say you were? I don't want to know. Just write it down. What other type of shoe does your shoe hang out with? So what other type of shoes does your shoe hang out with? You see, you might be a tennis shoe, but you like to hang out with high heel shoes. It just, I'm not saying that you do these things. I mean, that you write these things. I'm just trying to give jog your mind because not very many people. And I do this with professional people. I have with a CPA. What kind of shoe are you? And you'll never, yes, you will believe. And it was amazing what happened. She got what she wanted and it wasn't CPA. <laughs> okay. What other type of shoes does your shoe hang out with? Why does your shoe hang out with those type of shoes? Or why does it like to hang out with those type of shoes? What geographic location would your shoe be happy in? New York, Florida, Italy? <laughs> I don't know. You write it down. And you know what? This The reason I do this kind of assessment is so you can't get in your head and your, let your mind control. I want your spirit, your emotions, your dreams, your mind, and your physical body to get in this because we give the mind control over everything we do. No, you couldn't do that. And then ego says, you think you could? No, that's why I don't go with the conventional assessments. This is an unscientific, but it works, that I created. And I use these in corporate America, not just this particular one, but others. Okay, why would your shoe want to live there or hang out in that geographic location? Why? What's so enticing about that? What does your shoe wish it was? Why? Why does your shoe wish it was that? A movie star, an author, a gymnast, a mother, a father, anything. You just put it down. What did your shoe dream of being when it was a raw material? What did your shoe, when it was a piece of leather or a piece of cloth or a piece of rubber, when it was a raw material before society and manufacturing hadn't slapped it into some box. <laughs> Why did your shoe dream of being that? When it was raw material, why did it dream of being what it dreamed of being? What are your shoes ideal dream for life? If it could be anything, what would your shoe like to be? It might want to be a shoe in a different format. I don't care. This is your assessment. Why would that dream life be ideal? So what would the dream life be and why would it be ideal? If it were Jimmy Choo shoe in a shoe box uh, selling uh, in some uh, big uh, department store for $5,000. <laughs> Why would that dream life be ideal? What does your shoe like about being a shoe? After all, it has a soul. You're trying to find yours. Why? What does your shoe like about being a shoe and why?
what is your shoe? What is it? Excuse me. What is it your shoe needs in order to live that ideal dream? If it had this ideal dream, it does. We all have that inside, but we've talked ourselves out of it with our mindset. Or others that have instilled mindsets in us. I had a young man that was in high school with my son. His counselor told him, just get a garage mechanic kind of job because you'll never make it in college. That made me so mad. How does somebody else know what your dreams are in your future? Guess what I did? That was my son's friend. They played hockey together. I took him. Well, first of all, I said something to the counselor and she said, what do you know about counseling? I said, I'm a mom. But anyway, I took him to a university. It was a small one. But I said, I want this young man to succeed here. So I want to make sure he's given every opportunity. And I'll be here to check out. Periodically, I'll be checking. And he graduated with a B plus average from the four-year program. And guess what? He owns his own car business now. He owns his own car business. Don't let somebody else tell you what your shoe is. Don't let them. And so I, I think I've already said this, but what is it your shoe needs in order to live that ideal dream? And why doesn't your shoe have what it needs to live that dream? Why doesn't it have it? No excuses, no victim, don't play victim. You, you may just now be waking up to what you really, really want. But you know what we typically do? Well, I didn't have a chance. I came from a poor family. My mom was an alcoholic. My dad beat us. You know, we can go on with all kinds of excuses. No. This is not about coming up with excuses. Do I sound mean? <laughs> oh, if you ever get coaching from me, these are the conversations. Okay. What will your shoe do to start living its ideal dream life? What's your shoe going to start doing? Well, this is about action, commitment. Why will your shoe commit to doing what is necessary now to live its ideal dream life? What will your shoe do now? No more victim. No more excuses. <laughs> So uh, I know I sound mean, but I want everybody to have a quality of life that they deserve. And I can tell you that many, a big percentage of the people deserve more and they don't even know it. What has your shoe done in the past with its big dreams? When, they've, when you've had big dreams before, what have you done? Just said, oh, well, that's just a pie in the sky. That's from my imagination. Do you know what? Everything we do or accomplish or manifest in life first begins with our imagination. A young man imagined that he was going to be making some money to get him a car. He thought, how can I do that? He asked dad, can I um, have the lawnmower? He walked around to the neighbors pushing that lawnmower. And when he was 16, he made a down payment on his car. So what has your shoe done in the past to live its big dreams? Why will this time be the same? Will you do nothing? Or will it be different? And if it will be different, how? Where have you changed? What is... Maybe this assessment has uh, awakened you, or maybe you're at this point in your life where I, I, I can't go on like this, whatever, whatever you're saying to yourself. 
What mindset or mask will your shoe have to remove? So remember, we talked about mask before. So if you just pretend like everything's okay, that's a mask. If you hide from the fact that you're good at something, some people, I remember that I was an academic excellence student in high school, but I didn't want my friends to know that I did good grades uh, because I was afraid I wouldn't have friends. Aren't those crazy things? But, you know, I, I think those are the masks we wear that we think helps us to fit in. And then when we get older and as mothers and fathers, we do the same thing. Or as professionals in the corporation, we act like leaders when we don't even know what leadership is. Why is removed? Okay, what mindset or mask will your shoe have to remove? And why is removing that mindset or mask important? What is it you have to remove and why is it important? Because you don't like yourself. I wear this mask of pretending that I'm happy and pretending that I'm full of joy. And I really don't like myself. Okay, the next question. And we're almost done. What will you tell others about this unscientific assessment used by your coach today? Your hello self coach. What will you tell others? Will you tell them you went through a shoe assessment? Oh, oh my goodness. What will you tell others about this unscientific assessment used by your hello self coach today? Why will you say what you say about the assessment? Why will you say that? Will you unmask or will you put on another mask <laughs> to say she is crazy, you know, but I did go through it, but she's crazy and I can't see anything that happened. I mean, you know, she's just crazy. I just did. No, what's the mindset and what's the mask you put on? Why will you say what you say about the assessment? Because you don't want to see people see you as Oh, my God. And what's she going to learn from a shoe? Hmm, they might judge you. Interesting. So is that a mask you wear that you don't want to be judged by somebody else like that, that you did something stupid? <laughs> like finding what shoe you are. And the last question. What three insights have you realized from this inquiry? What three insights have you realized? About yourself, not about me. <laughs> what three insights have you realized from this inquiry? And the last part of that question is, why are those three insights of value to you? How and why are those three insights valuable to you? Now think about these questions that we ask and specifically the last two or three. Is any of that connected to your mindset of how with the assessment telling somebody, is that part of your mindset of how you believe? Oh my gosh, I can't tell you this, but this is, and you're a professional and you're telling them, well, I went through this, I, this uh, shoe assessment with this woman and this is what I discovered. And you're a professional graduate from Vanderbilt or Yale or MTSU or some two-year college, TSU, or some online college. What are you hiding? And what will you tell them? What and how is that connected to your typical behavior around your mindsets? That's all this is about today. So don't play the victim to any of these extents. I mean, these questions that we just talked about. Excuses can keep you a prisoner to your own beliefs and mindsets. 
Okay, we're wrapping up now. I hope you've had a good time. And I'm so grateful you followed me on this journey. But I want to give you just a few more things. Insights, not questions. <laughs> but some insights that I believe we need these every once in a while to just jog our energy, our encouragement, our inspiration. And I saw this one from Dolly Parton, and she's been out there so much lately, and I'm so excited about who she is and what she's done with her life and how she's worn whatever shoes she wants to wear. Listen what she says. Dolly, not about shoes, but Dolly Parton says, if you don't like the road you are walking on, start paving another. And that's what I want you to do today. Just look at it. Am I happy here? Do I like this road I'm on? Is this what I was expecting from my life? If you don't, start paving another one. And I'm going to help you a little bit more in um, episode three. We'll talk more about that. But you got to do the work here on the mask and the shoe so that you can take that now and start creating um, a new road a new path, a new, more exciting path. It doesn't mean that where you are is bad, but we always desire more and we can be more. Another thing that I really like is I'm about quotes and I love them. It is your time now, believe it and achieve it. So I just want to say thank you again for being with me on this journey today. and. I trust and believe that it can make a difference in your life if you are ready to uh, start paying attention to yourself, not to what the world says, or no, not to what somebody says you need to do this way, or sometimes even what your family has said, or what your friends say about you. Go to your own heart, soul, physical body, and mind. Go for a walk outside and just talk to yourself. Yeah, I don't think anybody will come and pick you <laughs> and say, oh, my goodness, this woman's lost her mind. If so, I would have been there a long time ago. But anyway, I want to thank you for your willingness for to be here with me on episode two. And remember, we're going to... I'm going to talk to you about how we can take what you learned in the first two episodes and then focus on what were those mindsets or what have been my mindsets that have gotten in my way because my whole energy around this, I believe that 2024 is a transitioning year, not only for you as an individual, but for our community, for the world. For the universe if you want to take go with me all the way there and that is where i go but i think um this is a, a big year and now's the time to get started and get rid or at least acknowledge all of those things that may have kept you from being all you can be because you may not see yourself as having much, but I can always help you find a lot more, I promise you. Now, before I close out this episode, I would like to say that if you want a copy of these questions, <laughs> you might even uh, tell, ask your friends these questions. Maybe you can become the coach. <laughs> But if you want a copy of them and you didn't, you you know, it's just too much to follow all the time, just email me at Patricia, Patricia, okay, let me start again. Email me at Patricia at PatriciaLeonard.net. My website is also PatriciaLeonard.net. So there's a lot of Patricia Leonard.net with me, isn't there? But anyway, if you want a copy of the question, just send me your email and I will send the questions to you and uh, you can have them for your own use or 
um, to help others too, because that's what our world is about right now. So I just like to say, I, I've had fun. I hope you have. And again, in case you forgot my name, <laughs> I'm your Hello Self podcast host, Patricia Leonard. And remember, my whole mission is to help you turn your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. And the way that I suggest that at the end of every podcast is keep dreaming. Thank you for joining Hello Self today. And may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming.